Hey everyone. So I'm going to do a new yarn pull on an oval today. Um, same base color as last time, but I got some new yarn yesterday that I want to try. It's the fleece yarn and it's a little heavier. And I think we'll get some bigger flowers. So I really want to try that. I did after I cut it. I started pulling at it so it does come apart. You want to be careful. If you get the yarn. So I'm going to get my base coat down and my base coat consists of one cup of paint, two cups of float trowel, and about two-thirds cup of water. This one is the only one that I add water to, is the base. I don't use it, I don't use water in my paint for painting. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this down, it's nice and runny. And if you do um, decide to do this, save a little bit of your base paint left over to touch up your edges. Because when it is thinner, um, a lot of times your fingerprints will show and you want to be able to um, cover those up after it's dry. And I have my banding wheel. I'm going all the way around it so I don't get paint on it. back here touch up my edge I'm gonna get paint on it regardless but I just didn't want to dump all that paint on it it's there already I put press and seal um, strand wrap on there so I can just peel it off and throw it away and everything's protected on the banding wheel Okay, so now on the paint that I used to pull with, I use um, probably one part paint, one part iridescent medium from Artist Loft, which makes it shimmer a little bit more, um, and probably enough flow trawl. It'd probably come out to about one part flow trawl because you want it. You want it thicker. This is kind of like runny pudding. Runny pudding, does that sound about right? <laughs> so let's give this a go and see how this works. I'm going to turn my banding wheel towards me. I'm kind of hoping that this yarn will hold the paint better than the thinner yarn that we were using. I'm trying very hard not to hit my microphone with this yarn. I already have paint on my webcam. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give a nice big flower right in the middle. set for just a few seconds and then I'll pull it off I try to keep it coming all one way now sometimes with your flow trial will give you cells but your ends won't sell up like if you were using um, silicone I don't use silicone in this. I was going to do something abstracty with with yarn, then I changed my mind. These sell pretty good. Um, people love anything with flowers lately. Same thing here. It's okay if you drip. You can always take it off or go around it. 
because we'll end up putting another flower here, petal here. And I don't reuse the yarn. It's got too much of the Payne's Gray in it. That's really pulling some beautiful blue on there. Do another one on the other side. This will be absolutely gorgeous when we resin it. And of course, we're going to use the stone coat art coat. Um, our coat is still below to order. And you don't have to get the metallics to go with your resin. You can get the base tint instead. And you'll get $30 off your order. But make sure you put everything in your cart before you put the coat in so that you get your discount. Now that I have main flower branches that I want, and of course this one's running over the side, I just want to torch this spot real quick to get a few bubbles. Okay. And I didn't torch it before I started. That's bad. My bad. I need to cut a few shorties. I'm just going to go in and put a few more petals in. I always do them one at a time. It's a little messy, but it's fun. Something different to do besides pouring paint. Some little ones here. I gotta fix this one here. You can look at it while I cut a couple more pieces of yarn. I love when it pulls the blue through. Um, as that dries, it'll change as well. And as the bubbles pop. I just mixed this white, so it probably has some air in it. Normally I mix the day before so that the bubbles come to the top. Okay, turn it back to me. here and I think we'll call it quits. And then I'm going to take the very edges out on some of those petals with my um, skewer just to give them a little feathery edge. Now you can do this with string or rope or whatever you want to use. 
it looks cool with chain, uh, the ball chains. But I always like the chunky yarn look the best. Try to do two two leaves on that one. Kind of losing this one here a little bit. She's sinking. You do go through a lot of white paint though. And I try not to tip it when I'm done. To tilt it. You can a little bit to get the bottom part off, but I wouldn't tilt it too much because then you're going to lose your, um, it'll stretch and you don't want it to stretch. All right, let me pull out some edgies. And you know, I can never leave anything alone. got quiet, didn't I? So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click below. Click on that bell so you'll get notified when I upload my next video. Click like and share. Leave a comment. Join us on Facebook. Shop with me on my Etsy shop for all your supplies. We have everything on there. The torch and the tray. The banding wheels on there. Cups and mixing sticks and everything you need to get started. Even the glue. Our airbrush is on there. That white is going to sink a little bit, so it's not going to be like stuck like that. That's why I'm pulling them out a little farther because they will droop down in. So yeah, get yourself some of the Stone Coat Art Coat Resin with my code. Um, we're going to be doing some flood coating um, tutorials. And helping everybody learn how to use it that bought it if they've never used it. Everybody that's afraid to use it, don't be afraid. Just get right in there. This stuff is phenomenal. I've tried quite a few resins and of all the resins that I've tried this is probably the one that I did not have any allergic reactions to. Also, um, it's UV resistant so this white, when I put it over this white, 
and it's exposed to light is not going to yellow. white is very heavy. Just want something there instead of nothing. So let me give it a torch and pop those air bubbles. If you still see air bubbles when you're done torching, see all those little white speckles are coming? Um, you can always go in with a toothpick and pop those bubbles by hand. You're not going to hurt anything. Sometimes you have that, that does happen and you can't get rid of them. Because you don't want them to dry on there like that. I think it looks pretty good. There's not much I want to change. Yep, so that's it for that one, guys. She's full and she's wispy. Let me bring her up to show you. Remember what I said about the edges, though, because they're already starting to sink, and they're just going to be little fine lines that you'll barely see. So I'm going to leave this here, and I'm going to let it set. I'll put you on pause, and we'll come back and take a look at it. So I'll see you in a few. Okay, it didn't change too much. Um, it still is feathering out on the edges, but I'm seeing more and more of the blue come up, which makes it so pretty. A lot of white speckles there. Um, I did touch a couple of spots with a toothpick, but it would bring too much white up, so I didn't touch it anymore. <laughs> But what you can do, if that happens to you and you don't like that, um, when it's dry, you could probably take a toothbrush with some gold paint and just fling some gold sparkles on there um, before you resin it or before you varnish it. It'd give it a whole new look. But I'm very happy with it. So that's it for today, guys. Um, Thank you so much for watching. Get your art resin ordered. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of flood coating videos. I want everyone to not be afraid of it. So um, I was at first, but you know what? You just got to do it. So we will see you all coming soon. Um, make sure you check out all the links below and leave a comment. Thumbs up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye now.